Hello, we are here today to discuss Mission Control Critical Orbit. This is a game I picked up at Origins, mm -hmm. and we got the expansion for it at Gen Con, which came in a really cool oxygen bag that was so cool. Yeah, this is very <laughs> neat. I don't know what I'm ever going to do with that, you know, but if I ever need oxygen, I guess I have a container for That's it. That's right. Now. That's right. Before we get into the discussion on this game, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down there so you can follow along as we go through all of our Gen Con origins and otherwise pickups. Yep. So, um, yeah, Rob, what can you tell us about All this? right, so Mission Control Critical Orbit. It's a 2023 release. Overall rank is 13,327 with a rating of 7.7. .7. Plays two to four people, and it says 15 to 20 minutes, so I guess that's adjustable based on the number of players. Yeah, it depends on the like how difficulty level you okay. want to have. And so 15 to 20 minutes, ages 12 and up. And it's designed by Corey Andalora and Donnie Coleman with art by Victor Maristone, uh, published by 3WS Games. They got two different price points. If you get it on Geek Market, they got it for 30 bucks. Amazon's got it for 40, but it did not look like it was readily available in just general retail yet. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So this is definitely a uh, co-op game and it is timer based. And it's a roll and write. Yeah, it's a roll and write. So it's kind of interesting to have a cooperative mm -hmm. roll and write. You don't see that much. And timed. And timed, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of elements. So uh, yeah, let's talk about what you get in the box. So you get uh, a lot of bits. You get a bunch of cardboard uh, Tetris polyomino style pieces. You get a cardboard screen that's two-sided. It's got the information, kind of tells you how to play the game shorthand on it. Uh, you get an inlay board for the person who's on the rocket ship. And then everybody else who's working from Mission Control get uh, like dry erase boards with mm -hmm. dry erase markers. They represent different cities. Yes. You have these really cool dice. They have the numbers one through six, but they look digitized yeah. on mm -hmm. them. Uh, you get a bunch of little wooden valves there and half valves. The half valves look like little uh, meeple type almost, but they're actually supposed to be half of this, but they're they're actually twice as big as these. So <laughs> of course they are. Uh, and then you do get some screen printed like cylinders that have a closed or slash mark circle on one side and open circle on the other okay. to tell you whether you get to move them or not. So um, basically, you know, the goal is basically you are an astronaut is on your ship that's under bad in badly need of repair for the oxygen. And you're working with all these different stations at Mission Control to give you the supplies you need and the information you need in order to repair your ship. And, you know, you're trying to rewire all the oxygen routes so that you can still survive on the ship. Mm -hmm. And you have 20 minutes of oxygen left on the ship in, in general. And I think you can alter that based upon conditions. You can have different conditions based on how much oxygen you have to get in order to win the game. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward game. Um, as far as the, the rule of the rules, there's a lot to it. But yeah. We'll get into that. Component wise, I mean, the inlay board's nice. Everything is okay. I don't think there's anything outstanding. The draw, the you know, the white dry erase boards are again fairly nice. Yeah, that, I think they actually look good for dry erase boards. Yeah, I mean, they are just almost cardstock. They're not as thick as some I've seen, but yeah, they, they don't need fine. to be. Yeah, they work fine. I, I'll probably go ahead and give this a seven because of the the inlay board and the. The, the screen printing mm -hmm. on the pieces and just, you know, the general coolness of the fact of this whole thing. Yeah, I agree. I think seven is a great score for it. I agree. Yeah, I'll go with seven as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. And what does little Robert think? Little Robert, man, he's probably seven. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, he's seven or? Yeah, no, no, he's, yeah, he's a seven. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, his is seven inches though. <laughs> 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 All right, so moving on. Size didn't matter, really. <laughs> I'm <dead at> this. <laughs> that always sounded horrible. You just said it, I'm like, that doesn't sound good. No, I haven't. Have. <laughs> you had to run with it. You know, with it. <laughs> All right, so moving on to theme. So the theme of this, as I mentioned, you were trapped in space, and you definitely feel with the timer, the pressure to get things mm -hmm. done. Uh, it, it went a lot smoother this game than it did the first time we played with, you know, we had a uh, three people as each one having their own 
city and one person back here and it was chaos but you know we were rapid rolling and calling out numbers i I don't think we had quite the oxygen thing quite caught up caught as far as what we needed to do last time but this time it went we were able to connect it much more smoothly and alex Um, and i we talked to see which numbers we needed so i think that helped out a lot too yeah so even i felt like we were like slower than we were before but we actually i think did fine Mm -hmm. Um, I think that also that might have to do with luck and just the pieces that you got. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of good pieces that had a lot of oxygen on them and not that many valves, which was helpful too. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, but thematically, you feel like the pressure. You oh, know, for on sure. It. And I do like the looks of all the the boards, as far as you know, ter- they look like computer terminals and so on. I like the pulp feel because it yeah. feels very much sci-fi pulp, like you would see in the. Uh, late 30s, early 40s uh, from Pulp Magazine. So I really like that. The artwork and the boards give you that same feel as well. So yeah. I like that quite a bit. All right. So as far as theme, what do you think? is um, the story? I think I'm going to give it an eight. I think it adds. It has the tension of a timed game. And generally, I don't like timed games. I like this one. I love the artwork. Uh, I think it fits mechanically as well as thematically. So I'm an eight. I'm probably an eight on this one as well. I was... I was teetering on eight and you know wasn't sure what your thoughts were yeah. on it but yeah i think eight it makes fit sense because it i mean it it, it fits the theme very well gameplay mm-hmm. wise you get that pressure and I, th- I like the way they made the different cities relevant like you're communicating right. with multiple like in, in you know in the united states whether it be houston or uh you know in florida can, right. you know, getting your cape canaveral or whatever getting your information from different locations and i think it really does bring that feel of uh, ground control to Major Tom type right. thing. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, what about you, Alex? Um, you know what? I'm going to give it an 8.5. I what? Really, yeah, I yeah. really liked the theme of this game. I like how every single one of these things is kind of like a terminal almost. So you're... like and, It's like a computer terminal. You're and like each one every, has its own different way you play. Yeah, right, yeah, and then... Also, there's like little characters that you'll see for um, each of the like different um, places. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and then you get that on uh, the back yeah, of your you card. Yeah, card you get your profile. Because each city has a leader, and so it's this main person over that city. And so, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, moving on. Moving on to the rule book. So, the rule book is 16 pages in length, although it says 15, but it's kind of impossible to have an odd number of pages. Uh, the cup has a cover, matches pretty well with the front of the box. The back has kind of the initial setup for the person who's behind the screen here. You roll a die secretly to know where you're going to place your canisters, although I don't know really how important that is for the uh, other players to know anyway. I, I think it would make sense that it stays hidden because if I saw what pieces you needed without t- uh, talking to you in well, well, the room, you probably, probably shouldn't be talking to me, yeah. I don't think. But if I saw it, then I'd be able to say, oh, okay, it looks like he needs a Z shape. Or yeah, looks like he needs an L shape. Well, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't let you see the board. I'm talking about the initial placement of where the canisters okay. are, which once you unlock them, you're going to be moving them around right. anyway. Uh, so I'm not sure how relevant that is, but it's you're you're supposed to keep it secret, right? Uh, so you know, as far as the rules, it's it's easy to walk through. They got some little comic looking endings, yes and no. So, they, they so literally look like so comic again books. that pulp. Feel yeah, to it. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I, I really like that look. And then it goes through how each of the different uh, terminals works for the different cities. And, you know, it, it's very tr- you know tricky, particularly behind the screen, because you kind of have to control, guide the other players on mm-hmm. what they you need. And you're you've got the strict timer, but you're doing a whole lot of activities. It's not just one thing you're doing; you're managing a whole lot back here. Right. So the more chaotic it is for the other players, the more chaotic, even more chaotic it is for the player back here. Um, you know, all, I, I, I think they've done a fine job on the rules. It's got a good font. Um, the, you know, I don't know if I would have gone with the color of the background, but, it, you know, for the most part, it's fine. You didn't have, I didn't have any questions when you were yeah. describing it, so we didn't have to go back to the rule book. Or... No, I mean, we, well, I read through kind of the rule book as we went through with you guys. 
and it you know it makes it makes perfect sense as you go through. I think it does a fine job, and it's only sixteen pages to get you into the game. Mm -hmm. I'll probably go ahead and give it an eight and a half. I think it does okay. a fine job. So moving on to gameplay. So here you know you've got one person that's managing this terminal where they've got basically a uh, wiring system, if you will, but it's actually oxygen tubes. Uh, that you're trying to get placed. You start out with nothing on the board except for canisters where these connections would uh, take place, you know, to and from. And those connections are hard fixed at the beginning of the game. You can't move them. And unfortunately, depending on the configuration, you could have stuff caught between other canisters where you've got it, you can't, given in the base game, there's no tubes that will let you cross. Mm -hmm. You may not even be able to com connect all of your your canisters, which it, you don't necessarily have to do to win the game. You just have to get enough oxygen pumped through the ones you do connect to, to win. And you can set the difficulty. We set it to the standard game and the difficulty we had to get eight oxygen mm -hmm. to connect to, in order to win. While the other players each have their own kind of condition that they play on to get the pieces you need to manage your board back here. So. Houston, for example, is the one who's the keeper of the, the pieces. Yeah, so. so I got the, well, I don't have them, but I fill out my board, and then I, if I complete a section, I tell him which section I complete, and he gets to draw a polyomino, which helps lay out right. your track, basically. Right, and then the other, next board, the Cologne board, you basically are getting set numbers to complete it, it, columns it, it's like you're adjusting your dials yeah. and you need your different reading so each time i completed a column and you have specific numbers blocks that you get to do that in so you can go over the number but you can't go under within those blocks so it might say a five and i have two blocks so i have to get two numbers in there to get the five or more and if i complete those and i fill out a bar on the bottom and then the, i can get eventually get unlock cards which allows him to do various different things. Well, I unlock the, the, I, these are what unlock the canisters to let me move them. So if I flip one, I get to flip one of my tokens, canister tokens to the other side and make it mobile, mm -hmm. but I can only move it along the same track at the, that it's already on. So I can't take one on the right and top and move it to the left or right. It, it has to stay on that same track. And then the one you were playing, Alex, it was I, which I can't even pronounce the name of. It's this, uh, bank. Uh, Bangalore, Bangalore, ben, Bangalore like, India. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, go ahead. It's essentially Sudoku. What you're doing is you're putting uh, whichever numbers we choose. Like we chose two numbers, and um, you put uh, both of those numbers in one of the um, terminals on you have there. You put them in two but different terminals. You can put them in. And like any space that's adjacent to a number that's already on the board. Right. And so, you can't have the same number multiple times in a row or column, just like right. Sudoku. So on each when there's no really rounds or turns. You've got 20 minutes, so you're gonna be rapid fire rolling. So you would roll the dice, and then as the person on this rocket, I'm the only one that sees the dice, but I call out the numbers to everybody. So in this case I rolled one four six. So I would call it one four six. They would then decide amongst them which numbers would be most beneficial of the three to get take two numbers that mm -hmm. they have to play at play into their area. And I get two numbers for each board that I played. He got two numbers right. for his board. So this plays up to four players because each one can have their own board. So uh, w whatever number they don't take, I use to move up two different tracks. If it's a one to three, I go up the black track on my board. If it's a four to six, I move up the white one. The goal is to get my valve that's on that track all the way maxed out because if I unlock it, then I get that valve and I can use it to put into my tubing systems because some of the tubes you draw to let the oxygen flow through will have valve requirements. Right. So it's basically locked and you have to yeah. unlock that valve. Yeah. So that's one way to get valves. Uh, the other way is when Alex's board completes a section he gets it's like every time he does half of one of the boards he i get to draw a valve component from this bag and it's only half of it oh great i got one of the bad ones so there's red ones white ones and black ones if you draw a red it goes back in the bag and you wasted your draw but here i got a black one so i got half of a valve this is even though like i said it's larger than the valve by about <laughs> twice the size 
it's only half of it. So I have to get the other half to complete the valve when I draw from here. Now, two of the, the boards you control, it was random draw, but two of them, the larger two, the ones that were took a little longer to get, where I get to look in the bag and choose which one, which mm -hmm. made it very helpful at the end there to get that valve I needed. Right. right. So uh, there's no way to win this without at least two out of the three boards. I'd say the least relevant one is the canister one, just because you can probably work around with the pieces you get to try to configure it with wherever the canisters lie. Now it is helpful to have the freedom to move it. So if you're tube is just like one out of out of reach you can do that or if you are really unlucky with the tile draws that you're right. getting so so the good news i don't have to lock my tiles in until i you know until the end of the game i can move them around however i need in my free moments i have mm -hmm. i try to do that problem is i've got all this chaos being called out to me from all the players telling me that they're ready they're locked we're ready to roll again and i have to manage all that i'm also managing the timer so I have, you know, the time, right? The only way that you all know how much time we have left is if I tell you. Mm -hmm. um, so basically all those things are happening simultaneously. So of the positions, I'd say this is definitely the most stressful one. Uh, the other thing is the, the other boards, I think Miranda was kind of bored with playing one of those yeah. when we played. I could see that. So, yeah, I think she... Once I get to two numbers on just one board, then you'd be done. And then yeah. you have to wait until everybody else is done. I was playing two, and I stayed pretty active. Yeah. So I kind of liked playing with two boards. Yeah. So I, I, it depends on you know how much chaos you like in your life. If you wanted to be have <laughs> total chaos, this is a place for you to play. Yeah. If you want more of a relaxed chaos. <laughs> and then one other thing boards. we failed to mention too: our boards all have bonus actions yes. too. So if you cover up a specific icon, it re it references a single one of the four areas so yeah. if i cover up a torch and it gives me an action here i get to pick a free number and i can just get it write it down if, it, if it's a, like an eagle looking icon then it's this one he's got a, a like a star like an atom looking type of uh, icon and you and know have a rocket, rocket ship so <clears throat> that's the other thing if we cover one of those up we have to make sure we communicate that because yep. that probably helped us win the game really because yeah. all those free numbers that we yeah got. and then uh, also on the tiles that I get, sometimes there's those icons yeah. and then that also triggers it. So there's a lot of interactivity between mm -hmm. the players all throughout, you know, I, calling out information during this game. Uh, so it's easy to get overwhelmed and flummoxed, particularly if you're trying to manage getting the wiring done. Yeah. It's fun to try the different positions. Uh, it's definitely different experiences you're going to have depending on which role right. you have. And uh, so it really depends on what your preference is, which seat would be best for you in this. And also how many players, because obviously it would be a different experience if you had to manage three of those boards than right. having Alex was managing one, you were managing two. You know, the more boards you have to manage, the more, the more stressful, stressful it would yeah. be as well. That's true. So, you know, it, you know, you get what, you know, your experience is going to be varied based upon what, how many players and what your your role is. Sure. I, I think this is a lot of fun. It's a good, you know, co-op game. You're very, you know, I, I, I kept saying I don't like co-op games. I'm getting more and more of them I do like. Yep. You know, I, 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 I don't think you can accurately say that anymore. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm weighing this between Sky Team, which are the two that, you know, I kind of picked up at Origins and yeah. Gen Con. Uh, I'm not sure which one I like better. I They're both really good. They're both really good, but I would say this one edges it out just a little bit because you can play up to four people. Yeah, that is Whereas true. Or a Sky Team is only two player. And I love two player games, mm -hmm. but I don't get to play two player games very often. I'm more often three to four. Yeah. And so I that's why I think this might edge it out just a little bit. So what is your thought on the score on this one? Um, I think I'm gonna give it an eight and a half. I okay. really liked it. I, I, I like the idea, especially playing two boards. I mean, I think I would have a very different number if I only played one. And so, but playing two had just the right amount of tension for me, and I really liked it. And it didn't feel chaotic. You mentioned chaotic. It did not feel. Captain Sonar is chaotic. <laughs> this is not chaotic. Well, we and, did play it the standard mode, and we, and I will say the expansions, at least there's a promo pack that you had that you could buy when you, this was out at Origins. Yeah. 
this adds more difficulty by that's, adding. That's true. So you can build on this one. So yes. from that perspective, I think this one will probably win over Sky Team right now. I suspect Sky Team will get some add-ons considering how successful it was. Right. But this one already has the expansion to make it more difficult for the players. Well, and don't forget too, my, the, all those to modules of Sky Team that we even touch. So that's yeah. true too. So, yeah, it's got a campaign mode. Yeah. This one doesn't particularly have a campaign. So they're kind of pros and cons for both. I'm somewhere between 8.5 and a 9 on this one. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're a little bit better than me. Yeah, I, I can't remember what we gave Sky Team I think exactly, we were, but we were right we were either 8.5 or 9. Yeah, we were right in there on that one, too. It, I I think given the fact that this one has growth already, yeah. uh, I'm a little probably going to give this one the nod as well. Okay. Um, what about you, Alex? What do you think? I will say 8.5. I will say that also I don't have much experience with this game and um if i wanted to give it like a true score i would probably have to play like the other roles multiple times yeah. Yeah. You know, the other roles mm. but I, I i think i think it's a good point but i think it'd be mainly playing as the the, the people on the rocket yeah because yeah. these they're a little different but i think they're going to be a little samey in that in yeah. the same role especially if you only play one at a time yeah and it's a very different experience playing too which so. is what, probably why I think I edged you out a little bit on score because I think there's more to this board yeah. and more of that experience and you feel more in the hot seat. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're. But the that's one. a good point, Alex. Though, yeah. like, that, that's a good point. You're the one that's your life is on the line, whereas the right. people at home can go home to their wives. And, uh, <laughs> well, I I don't think I put that much. You're right. I didn't put yeah. that much into it, so yeah. I, I didn't think you were going to die if I didn't want to. Get yeah. It, so I mean, you could. Actually, technically, the three of us, you guys could have played Sky Team to get to your city. No, what we need to do is get an oxygen tank and put 20 minutes worth of air in it and hook you up into it. And then if we lose, our AD passes out. No, because you all would be throwing the game on purpose. <laughs> oh, I never got a piece for you. Sorry. Oh, oh man. <laughs> uh, so that's our thoughts on Mission Control. Um, if you've had a chance to play it, you know, let us know what you think. Now, some of our viewers, I know Todd got a chance to play because yeah. we met Ta at Origins, mm -hmm. and that's where we got to play this for the first time was with him and his girlfriend. So, uh, yeah, it was it was a great experience getting to meet them there and get to play this with them. So, uh, yeah, if you know if you haven't had a chance to play this one, and this sounds like something to be interesting to you, uh, you can still find it apparently. but yeah. it's just harder to find than normal. Just not normal retail, but it's definitely there on Amazon and a little bit cheaper on Geek Market. But I didn't see the shipping, so yeah, you know if you have Prime, so probably cheaper to get on Amazon. Yeah. All right. Well, until next time, you keep breathing and don't <laughs> let this guy hook you up to oxygen. <laughs> it's wise words. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.